Update. My best friend Pam, female 22, started dating my male 22 high school bully. The fallout. Original post. Just as the title said. I, male 21, have a girl, let's call her Pam, female 22, I considered to be my best friend for the last three years. Pam has seen me go through a lot. Especially after my family disowned me for not forgiving my cousin for hooking up with my then-girlfriend four years ago. Pam was the one to help me through all that, and I genuinely thought she was someone who would never hurt me. But here I am. Last night, she was hanging around my apartment and we were drinking. She's not good with it. So she got loose and admitted to being in a relationship with my high school bully. All of us were in the same class, so she knows the kind of things he, male 22, has done to me. Especially after my family disowned me, he got even meaner as my cousin was a part of his group. He and his gang of lackeys always physically and mentally mistreated me. I filed a complaint with the school, but we all know how helpful they are in these cases. Moreover, since I did not have my parents by my side, nothing was done to them and my life was made even hellish. Pam was the only one who kept me together so I started living with her parents after I was disowned. So she knows firsthand what kind of torment that person put me through. Back to the topic. I don't think she immediately realized what she had admitted to. It went to sleep in my spare bedroom. I was too shocked to sleep, so I went to stay with a college friend. Pam must have realized what she confessed to last night and have since bombarding my phone with calls and texts. My friend took my phone away and I'm using his phone to type this post. Apologies for any mistakes. I am honestly thinking of cutting her out at this point. She means a lot to me, but I just can't be around her anymore. But I don't know whether I'm being unreasonable here. Can someone help me? Now for the top advice before reading the updates. Hey OP, I am really sorry to hear you have to deal with us. To reference those saying that people change, OP, you were not required to forgive him, or your friend, under any circumstances. And moreover, your best friend cannot forgive him for you. I think you should also note that she clearly deliberately hid her relationship from you. She knew that this would upset you, hence why she hid it from you until she was too drunk to continue doing so. I don't think it would be unreasonable for you to cut her off or even request distance. If this is unforgivable for you, that's okay. Personally, I wouldn't be able to forgive a friend that dated my torment her, so I understand where you are coming from. I think whatever choice you end up making is up to you, but whatever option you choose is okay. I wish you luck in continuing to heal moving forward. This is the one. Do not rush to forgive just to please your friend. Also, she hid this for a reason. And if the bully changed, he would have reached out knowing he was dating Opie's friend to make amends. Wow, she's a terrible person for doing that. There is no way in hell she didn't realize this was going to be the outcome. On top of it all, she has given your bully even more ammunition to humiliate and bully you with. I guarantee she has probably told him everything about you and about all the breakdowns you've had. This person is not your friend. This is most likely exactly right. Pillow talk is powerful stuff. It usually has a lot of this can't leave this room type of information being exchanged. So long as she's with him, Opie's literally unsafe. Edit. Well, I don't know how to update posts in the sub, so I'll just tell you some information here. I haven't decided to meet her tomorrow to hear her side of the story. I need to do at least that much. Also, I'll answer your questions tomorrow as well. Thank you for everything. I never knew there would be so many people out there who will help me so much. And now for the update. Let me start with apologies and thank you to everyone who helped me with my last post. Either way, I want to talk with her the next day to get to know her side, as most of you wonderful people suggested me too. But on someone's advice, I did not go alone. I had a couple of my college friends with me. I didn't know what I was thinking or feeling back when I entered a cafe we were supposed to meet in. But when I saw her, it felt as if she had been crying for the entire night. As Pam saw me walking towards her, she got up to hug me. We usually greet each other like that, but I gently pushed her away. I could see she was hurt, but so was I. My buddies took seats over at the next table and Pam and I got to talking. She could barely form any sentences as she kept apologizing. I told her to stop crying as gently as I could, and she finally started telling her side of the story to me. Well, they had not been dating for three months, but for a year. Yep, for a year she had been lying to me. And then came the line which most of you said she would. Pam, he has changed a lot. You should meet him. Me, 
Really? You're going to say that to me after all he has done? I still have scars from what he did to me. You know this, don't you? Why were you talking to him in the first place? Pam, he wanted to apologize to you for all he did, but didn't have the courage to. From then on, the conversation went in circles. He wanted to apologize. The two of them got to talking at all. But she did not have the answer for my one question. Why him? At this point, someone walked over to us and sat beside her. Any guesses who it was? Yep, it was my bully. Let's call him Matt. I don't clearly remember what happened afterwards, but there was a lot of yelling and then Matt snapped and tried to punch me for making his girl cry. Pam was watching it all. I wasn't in the right mind, so the punch hit me. My friends rushed over, but before they could do anything, I knocked Matt down. Back in high school, I used to be small and weak, but in the last couple of years, I have grown a lot, both in height and weight. Thankfully, my friends stopped me before I did something that would have made me regret later on. Pam was crying all the while, but not once did she try to check on me. At that moment, I knew our friendship was over. I looked at her for one last time and told her, so much for a change, don't you think? After that, my friends and I walked out of the cafe. It was then all the rush and anger I had disappeared, and I started bawling like I was back in high school. Not proud of it, but my friends helped me immensely. The days following the meet were tiring as I was busy moving in with my friends. The apartment I was living in belonged to Pam's parents, so I didn't think it was right for me to continue living there. However, before leaving, I called them and told them about the fight and stuff, and that I was moving out. They were surprised and reassured me that their daughter will not cause me any issues, but I declined. I was living there while paying minimum rent to them, and I did not think it would be a good idea for me to live somewhere Pam could find me. I thanked them for all they had done for me over the last few years, and reassured them our relationship was still the same. I could feel it was tough for all of us, but this farewell was necessary. So, here I am, living with my college friends who also celebrated my birthday last night. It was an awesome party, and completely unexpected too. After all, in all this mess, I forgot about my birthday for the last time in life. On my birthday, Pam tried to call and text me, but I didn't reply to or see her text. So that's all, I think. I'm still sad about losing my best friend, but I know this is the best for both of us. On a positive note, though, I was informed that I have been selected for a student exchange program. So if the pandemic allows it, I'll be moving to Singapore in a couple of months. And lastly, thank you for all the love and support you people gave me. Love y'all and take care. Good for you. At least she'll now know that he is as violent as you remembered him to be. Yep. I wasn't even surprised. Opie, as you also said, why was she even talking to him in the first place? Even if he changed or wanted to apologize, it doesn't change what happened and it's still a very big betrayal and extremely disrespectful. Now we've all seen that he hasn't even changed. Maybe you could press charges. It is petty, but he deserves it. You had a lot of witnesses as well. The guy wanted to apologize, which I also suspect since his apology was attacking you. He never apologized to you. So he came to her to apologize to you, and she began sleeping with him? That's her logic, and just shows how much of a piece of trash she is. The relationship really won't last. She'll see his true side and will wonder if he was really worth the relationship. Good luck for the exchange program. Singapore is a great place. I know I shouldn't be concerned about her, but I hope she leaves him for her own good. Doesn't matter, dude. It's her life. She's made her decision. You can't expect to go rob a bank and not face any consequences. Why does she even want to stay friends with you? She clearly doesn't care or have any empathy. She also was worried about him over you when he attacked you. Yeah, that fact hurt me more than my parents disowning me. It was a mixture of pain and satisfaction of knowing I wasn't wrong. Now for the last story. Update. Brother's girlfriend thinks I bullied her in high school. I don't remember her, and her story seems off, but I can't come to Christmas unless I apologize. Original post. My brother Jack is dating Jess. I met her in summer and she said we'd gone to secondary school together. She seemed upset I didn't remember her, so I apologized and she said it was fine and then she walked away. I'm engaged to a guy I went to high school with and still in touch with a friend from school, so I messaged both of them and asked them if they remembered Jess. And neither did, so I figured that Jess just wasn't in my classes and that's why I couldn't place her. That night, Jack messaged saying I really upset Jess once again. 
And I was like, again? But it says that Jess says I used to bully her. I'm not going to say I was a great person in high school. I had lots of friends, but I was going through a lot of crap. So I could be nice, but could also often be just a raging witch. I never targeted or tormented anyone. And I truly do not think it crossed into bully territory. But I could be very rude and sarcastic. I was definitely not an a-hole, but bully is a bit much in my opinion. Jack said I had to text him an apology so he could show it to Jess. So I sent a generic apology text because I don't know what I actually did, and could only assume I was a nahal to Jess at some point. Jack called me out on it being generic and said I needed to be specific. I told Jack that I didn't remember Jess. So if she wants a specific apology, she needs to tell me what I am apologizing for. Jess says I stole her boyfriend, gave her an eating disorder, and stopped her getting into her dream university. And here is where the story gets sketchy. Because the guy Jess claims to have been dating at a time was a liar who told people we hooked up when we didn't. As for the eating disorder, I was a witch, but I would never encourage someone to develop an ED. As I had an eating disorder myself and BDD, so I was not about to make someone else feel bad about their body when I felt like crap about mine. As for the university, Jess says I made her fail an exam, and failing it kept her out of uni. I have literally no idea what she means. I'm also pretty sure that Jess and I went to different sixth forms, and sixth forms are where you do A-levels, which are the ones that get you into uni. So I have no idea how it's possible for me to have messed up her A-levels when we weren't at the same school. But bottom line is that she believes that I am personally responsible for all of this. Jack says that Jess said that where she's at in life now is all down to me bullying her. I still don't remember any of it. And I actually feel like I remember less with every new piece of info she gives me because it just seems off. Maybe I'm in denial and I need to take a hard look in the mirror. But until then, I'm having an issue giving a sincere apology. And without a sincere apology, I am not allowed to attend Christmas. I haven't seen my relatives in ages, and I'm already in isolation in preparation. And my kids are really excited, so it would suck not to be able to go after all of this. But my dad is siding with Jack and Jess, and has said that he wants a calm Christmas. So if I don't deal with the high school drama, I'm not invited. How do I apologize for something I don't remember and resolve this with the least possible drama? Now for the top advice before reading the update. Got some friends in common with her from high school? Maybe they can help with the situation, aka clear up her BS. The fact your dad wants to deny seeing his grandchildren is pure BS. I'm not in contact with many people from high school. Most of my friends were like me, meaning they were really witchy. So I'm only in touch with one of them who grew up and mellowed out, and she doesn't remember Jess either. I married my high school boyfriend and then divorced him, and now I'm engaged to the self-described awkward nerd who also went to my high school, who is not popular or cool, but it says my friends and I weren't that bad. But interestingly, he also does not remember Jess. I'm sure that if I can't do Christmas, Dad will work something out with me so he can see the kids, because he does love my kids. But it sounds like he wants to make sure Jack is happy, and Jack will only be happy if Jess is happy. So Dad is prioritizing Jess this year. I think you have already done enough, and humoring her is just going to worsen her fixation and scapegoating of you. I tell him, I'm done catering to demands for another apology of events I don't even remember from a decade ago, when I wasn't even a legal adult. If your girlfriend can't move on with her life, I suggest therapy. I'll make my own holiday plans with the rest of the family on a different day. Then drop the rope. Tell your extended family the same thing. No, you will not be showing up in a sackcloth and ashes flailing yourself for her crappy teenage experience. No, you will not be sending your children over without you to appease Jack. When and if they want to see the kids, they can make plans with you, the mother. You don't owe Jack or Jess what. It's not your fault you previously dated a psycho either. In fact, it kind of sounds like he may be dating another one. And now for the update. So I've figured out why I didn't remember Jess. It wasn't Jess. Fiance and I went through some old boxes. We're in the UK, so we don't have yearbooks. But we had Leavers shirts and this little book and both had names of our fellow Leavers on them. We found his shirt and we went through it. Jess was on there, so she did go to our school. But we saw another name, Kate, and it bugged me, but I don't know why. I then went back to the year photo and almost instantly, my brain matched the name Kate to a blonde girl in the photo. 
My fiance and I realized that Kate dated Jimmy, and Jimmy is the guy that Jess said I stole from her. I then messaged Jack and explained all of my issues again. Jess going to another school, the notion I gave her an eating disorder, but now the realization that Kate was Jimmy's girlfriend, not Jess. Then said that if Jess can explain this, I'll apologize. And if she can't, then I expect an apology from her instead. A few hours later, we were all in a Zoom call. It's here Jess admitted that she and I didn't interact in school. She was friends with Kate. I was dating my ex-husband at the same time Kate was dating Jimmy. My ex and I were very on again slash off again. And after one of our breakups, Jimmy dumped Kate so he could ask me out. The date went terribly, so Jimmy went crawling back to Kate after her. I remembered Kate and Jimmy as being very on and off, like my ex and I were. But turns out that this was the only time they broke up before the final breakup a few years later. Kate started comparing herself to me and developed an eating disorder to match mine, so she blames me for that too. As for the exam, I am still not entirely sure how I screwed that up for her, but Kate and I did go to the same sixth form and shared a class, so we took at least one exam in the same place and at the same time. Just referenced the eating disorder. And when I took my exams, I was pregnant with my oldest and had severe morning sickness. So my best guess is that my throwing up set off Kate's ED before an exam. And as for why Jess went along with it, other than still being friends with Kate is that I had a large group of friends in high school who I have since stopped speaking to, and a couple of them picked on Jess a lot. But Jess confirmed that I did not personally do anything to her at any point. Jess met my brother in a support group last year. She told Kate and it looks like they cooked up this little scheme together. Though it's unclear if she started dating Jack to get me, or if it was just coincidence. I asked if we could get Kate into Zoom so I could talk to her directly, and she joined. I did try and get details on how exactly it cost her ED and made her fail her exam. And she got very angry with me, saying that she wasn't going to explain because if she gave details, I would use them to talk my way out of it. I asked why Jess said that I bullied her and not her friend Kate, and Kate said I would have denied it either way. It referenced me mentally torturing her, saying that now we were even because I had admitted to spending hours racking my brain trying to figure out what I did, just like Kate had back then. I snapped at her when she said that, saying she needed to grow up and stop blaming others for her problems. And Kate, Jazz, and Jack all left the Zoom. I told Dad everything, but he hasn't replied yet. I've not heard from Jack, Jazz, and Kate since then, but honestly, Kate and Jazz sound equally bad crap crazy. So I'm guessing they're feeding into each other's psycho logic right now. No clue what Jack is doing either, but he was angry with Jess on a call. And he was repeatedly pushing her to tell me everything, so I hope he's on my side here at least.